we're good. We're, we're better. Good. Right, okay. Yeah. Can you, is that much better? Yeah, that's much better. Okay, Lovely. we were just um, relaying, when you had the videos there from uh, for Nicky Henderson, for Bobsworth and Paul Nichols, Suni Ivo Conti. Before we talk about today's race, obviously you sponsor the big Betfred Gold Cup on Friday. You must be looking forward to Cheltenham, and in particular, that big race on Friday. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Cheltenham, of course, I mean... It's obviously our um, our biggest week of the year. It's not probably the, the Grand Nationals, the biggest single race, but as a sort of four-day event, four-day festival, Cheltenham just blows everything out of the water. And I think this year, I mean, it's really exciting because the whole week tees off with Tuesday with all these Mullins hot pots. And um, whichever way it goes, I think even if the if they all go in, it's obviously going to be pretty gloomy for the bookies. I mean, I don't, everyone's heard that a thousand times before over the last week, but... You know, even if they all go in, there is a little bit of a silver lining for us, which means punters, I mean, the pump's just going to be prime for them. They're going to have that full pockets full of cash from these Mullins horses going in on Tuesday. And the next three days could be some of the biggest betting days in Cheltenham history. So the good thing is, if they all go in on Tuesday, at least it's on the first day and the bookies at least have three days to try and claw it back. But, um, I mean, the big loser we have, we've just you just touched on the Gold Cup. Our worst result at the moment is Sylvan Yarko in the Gold Cup. We've been laying him all year. We sort of set our stall out at the start of the year to lay him for that race. And we have done. We've laid him from sort of 12 to 1 all the way down to 3 to 1 at the moment. And... Yeah, we're still laying him, and, and that's the one we really need to avoid. So if Mullins has a few winners on Tuesday, we could have a couple of good days, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe be back in the, back in the mix. But if still Vignaca goes in in the Gold Cup, then we'll, we definitely will be heading back up the M6 with um, empty pockets. We might be hitching a lift back. Uh, Matt. Andrew, Matt Mitter in the studio. You just mentioned there about taking horses. I mean, 12s into 3 to 1. At what time do you... As, as traders make a decision to take something like Zebra Conti on, and what are your reasons behind that? Well, I think, I think if you look back to last year's Gold Cup, it was such a, a bizarre race. I mean, I'm talking about 12 to 1 sort of right at the start of the year when really the picture was pretty muddy in terms of the Gold Cup. And you sort of look at Sylvan Yarko, you think this Gold Cup, really there's not a standout horse and really anything can come and can win it. We're looking for sort of a, a second season chaser to come up this year and challenge the top horses because there wasn't a standout. I mean, it's obvious Sylvan Yarko on this form on other tracks is the horse to be. If he could reproduce his, Gold Cup, his, his uh, King George form, his Betfair chase form at Cheltenham, if he, that was a given, then he wouldn't be three to one. He'd sort of be a sort of six to four chance getting towards even money because he's, he's that far clear of his rivals. But... I mean, as a bookmaker, you've got to, if there is a question mark, you've got to take it on. I mean, it is the Gold Cup. We've got to take on the Fav. Now, even if, I mean, it is our race, but even if you were, it wasn't our race, you'd still want to be taking him on. And, and as long as there's that question mark there as, as whether Cheltenham is his track, whether he can show his best there, the ground's going to be pretty quick on Friday. I think there's a question mark whether that will suit him down to the ground. Will he get home? He seems to get home over three miles very well on a flatter track, but three miles, two and a half at Cheltenham has, has, has tested him in the past. So... I mean, those are the reasons we want to take him on. That's why we've laid him. That's why we have him for sort of a huge amount of money at the moment. He's the ugliest blot in the book. And, I mean, he could easily go and win. But if he does, we'll just have to take it on the chin and, and move on to, to sort of the next races. And that's that's the way bookmaking goes. We'll move on to the Grand National and hopefully get shut the front door be, yeah. beat in there. Yeah. So, um that's just the way it is. But, yeah, I mean, I think there are question marks, and that's why we want to take him on. In relation to the, the Betfred Gold Cup, I mean, how difficult is it to, to price up horses like Coney Green, for example, who, who was entered for both the RSA and the Gold Cups? I, I think it's extremely likely to actually go for that Gold Cup. Um, how, is it, how difficult is it bookmakers pricing these events up? It is tricky. I mean, I think as soon as the non-runner no bet comes in, that, that makes it a little bit easier for the, for the bookmakers because you're almost you're pricing up as if they're going to run because there's no point being too big because if he doesn't show up, punters are just going to get their money back. So it's a sort of a no-win situation for the bookies. But Coney Green, he is a little bit of a... Um, he's a fly in, the fly in the ointment, so to speak. He's an interesting one because I think the most... If I, was, if I owned him, I'd probably go for the RSA. But they obviously want to go for the Gold Cup. And he's an interesting horse because... For Sylvan Yarko, I'll just go back to him. He is a front runner. He likes to front run, dictate the pace. And sort of Coney Green could be the landmine in there because he's going to go in and just bomb off at 1,000 miles an hour. That's the only way he goes. And that's not going to suit Sylvan Yarko. So that's in our favour. If he ran in the RSA, it'd be a similar problem for King's Palace because he's another horse that likes to dominate. So he's a really interesting horse to throw into the mix. I don't think he's good enough to win the Gold Cup. All this stuff like saying... The Gold Cup is the easier race to win. I, I can't have that, to be honest. I think there are better horses in the Gold Cup than the RSA. But on the other hand, he is eight years old. That is kind of this kind of a peak age to be going for a Gold Cup. It's just whether 
he has the experience and whether, I mean, can he front run and dominate a Gold Cup? It's really hard to do in history at Cheltenham just to front run and dominate the field the whole way. So I think there are question marks. I think he'll run well, but I don't think he'll win. I mean, even if he went for the RSA, I'm not convinced he'd win that either, but Oh. It's certainly an interesting angle for the Gold Cup. If he goes, I mean, hats off to them for trying, and hopefully he runs well. Uh, in relation to the, the four days at uh, Cheltenham, obviously uh, Betfred are taking bets all, all, all around the world on, on, on the four days. What, what are the sort of big punters going for in the four days? Any, anything stand out? Yeah, well, really, we have, we have two real standout losers. Number one, I've, I've mentioned Sylvan Yarko. He's our number one. And then Sprinter Sacra's not too far behind. And also, you know, the new one's pretty bad as well in the, um, in the champion hurdle because we've tried to keep Fahin on side for most of the year. So, Sprinter Sacra, I mean, he's another one. I mean, if, if, if you guys sitting there, if you were bookies, I'm sure you'd be wanting to take him on as well as a bookmaker, Sprinter Sacra, because he is just another horse that has questions to answer. You just don't know if he's as good as he used to be. And his Ascot run was, you can look at it with sort of rose-tinted glasses and say he travelled well and on a comeback run that was pretty encouraging on the other hand you could say he didn't jump great he didn't jump great at Kempton when he was pulled up all those like, over a year ago and maybe yeah. his jumping's gone so yeah there's different angles to look at these horses that's what makes it so fascinating and in the champion hurdle we just think Fahin's a really really good horse and we think he's got the beating of the new one so in terms of we don't think we're we're kind of happy with where we're sitting at the moment we've laid the horses we want to it's just whether we've got it right or wrong. I think, I think you or I, Andrew, might be able to win on Fahim. Um, I'm actually very keen on Sprinter Sacra as well, so there you go. Um, Andrew, <laughs> in, in relation to today, obviously you've got the big handicap hurdle. I mean, this is uh, uh, 24 runners. Um, I, I mean, where's the money going on the big race today, the Imperial Cup? It's been, I mean, yeah, we've, of course, we've been betting on this one since, um, since Monday, and we've, we've laid a good spread of horses, actually. I mean... Bidori, we were fairly short at the start of the week. I think we're around five to one. He's been drifting out ever ever since then. He's out to sort of eight to one this morning, then nibbled back into seven. And we were laying some horses at sort of big prices in the week to some shrewd punters. We laid the likes of Chieftain's Choice at a big price. We laid that to a pretty shrewd punter. And we also laid Ebony Express for um, Richard Newland. We laid a bit of camping ground for Robert Wolford. But, um, yeah, it's an interesting horse. I think in terms of this morning, the ones we're laying are Calypso. He's price-wise, he's been popular. He's probably got the best form in the book. He's um, he was a bit. The race wasn't really run to suit last time in the Betfair hurdle because he's held up off a slow pace. I think there's going to be more pace here today. That should suit him. Bit of money around for Bidori, like I mentioned. He's a sort of pipe horse, the kind of hype horse going for this um, Cheltenham Sandown hundred grand bonus. I mean, Pipe's obviously got a great record with horses doing the double, so he's interesting on that front unproven on, on good ground, which is a little bit of a question mark. And West Wizard, he's a good crown horse, unexposed, had some decent form earlier in the year with Manella Rocco, who looks a useful novice, got beaten six or seven lengths by him. But, I mean, he could be anything in his first handicap. He could be off a really good mark, and he's been back from eight to one, from nines. But, I mean, this is a real bookmaker's race looking at it. There's sort of 23 runners, seven to one the field. It's wide open, and it, and it should be a cracker. And uh, finally, Andrew, I mean, the last time he was on, I know you're not allowed to bet, um, um, but you gave us, a, a, I think, a big price winner. So is there anything around the country today that you think, oh, I, I like the look of that so that we can maybe bet on it? Um, yeah, probably, that's probably my one winner for the year, I would have thought. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I should just stop there, quick while I'm ahead. I do like, um, two o'clock, I, li I like Hello George. I think he's quite interesting for Philip Hobbs. I just think the ground was too soft last time. He's a good ground horse. He was sort of... He was well back for a very good handicap earlier in the year, nibbled at big prices, and um, I think he's got lots of ability. And around 11 to 1, 12 to 1, I think he'll go very well each way in the two o'clock. OK, fantastic. Well, that, I mean, I didn't ask you for that link, but after we finish with you, we've got Melissa Jones, who, who's uh, head of the Ra well, Racing Post uh, tipping, and she's gone for Hello George. So maybe great minds think alike. Yeah, um, full, full seldom differ, isn't that what they say? Yeah, well? absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. We will see. Um, thanks very much indeed. Yeah, cheers, guys.